Yeah, good morning, sir. We are here. I am Dr. Gaurav Chaudhary, Professor okay. of Cardiology from King George Medical University, Lucknow. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah. Okay. I so we are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you want to say something, Gaurav? No, sir. It's it's my pleasure to be with you and to learn from you. So I think we are okay here. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go on then. Uh, so good. Uh, we start with our case. Uh, is a as I mentioned, this is basically the Boston Scientific, EHCC, and Mount Sinai Hospital. Oh. If we can move. Okay, these are our disclosures. And uh, this is the case number two in this series of Learn from the Masters. Uh, we did one case last year. In November, and now this is a 75-year-old male presented with crescendo angina a few months ago. Has the risk factors as shown there uh, with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, non-diabetic, obesity, smoker, and SAQ. SAQ basically represent how bad is your angina symptoms are. It's 46. It's from 0 to 100. 100 means uh, asymptomatic. 0 is very symptomatic. Uh, so it's like uh, significant symptoms on this patient. Patient had a CATS done. At outside hospital revealed extensive calcific two-vessel disease with total occlusion of the LAD. Uh, they had a cabbage discussion mm -hmm. there and patient declined. EF was normal uh, and uh, high syntax score like 46 because of uh, calcification and multiple branches. And patient opted for uh, PCI and came here on good medical therapy uh, as shown oh, there. Uh, all And the triple anti-ischemic therapy. And uh, we'll show you the angiogram now, and we will show it uh, with a two vessel that one already has been taken care, which is the LED, and today is for the RCA. Require four stents there. So this is a show this us is the, the LED. left system. Yeah. If you can see the angiogram, yeah. where uh, left main is a uh, non-obstructive, circ was also non-obstructive. You can see the LED that was totally occluded, recanalized with a few stents. Diagonal looks uh, non-obstructive, and here we are. EF is Good. This is the RCA that we are going to be working on today. Your proximal RCA. It's a you know, anterior as well as a downward takeoff of the RCA, but uh, significant disease in the proximal, mid, large size. Uh, there is some ectasia as well as a lot of calcium. And it's an early bifurcation where you can see a PDA coming off. Ostium is about 30-50. And after that, Again, there is a calcific about 60-70% uh, lesion in the larger uh, AV continuation and we have multiple RPLs after that. So the question will come that do we do only proximal to mid or do we go distal because going to distal may jeopardize part of the PDA because there is a moderate disease. But look at the heavy calcium before the dye, dye comes in, right? Uh, uh, the very extensive severe. I mean, it, this is there should be a new category. Not only mild, moderate, severe, like uh, massive uh, calcium, uh, tram track, entire long segment of entire vessel. And this is not the patient uh, uh, the renal failure. We see that very often in patient with the renal failure. But non-renal failure. I know the Indians actually have a lot of calcific disease. The same uh, thing in this particular case. Uh, and the uh, issue will be that do we stop after the proximal mid or do we go into the distal, uh, that AV continuation of the early bifurcation? Wait one second, good discussion. Yeah, so that issue remains that what we need to do uh, from, uh, and then we'll have a discussion on that point. So let me just present, complete our presentation and we are ready to, uh, clearly the plan will be to do a rotation atherectomy. We have the pacemaker ready already for this case and use the IVAS guidance. I don't think we need the IVAS in the beginning. Reason is because they're clearly very severely calcified. I always tell them that once you have tram track, you don't need to confirm that on IVAS. If it's a mild to moderate, then you need IVAS to see whether you have more circular calcium and so that do you need some atheric technique. Otherwise, uh, this patient from the criteria point of view, uh, that uh, non-LAD disease on maximum medical therapy will be appropriate. So with that note, uh, Anu, tell us uh, what is your plan now. We go back to the angiogram. Any uh, comment, uh, anything different? Okay. So we have a seven French uh, guide that we are uh, going to be using. We will have a Mark uh, Lima guide that uh, we will use and uh, we'll wire it with the fielder fine cross. Use a rotor floppy wire 
and uh, probably start with one seven five bar, and then we decide if we have to upgrade. We have a seven French, thinking that we'll have to use a larger size uh, bar here. Yeah. Okay. So we are ready here. So that's our goal now. Um, any agreement, disagreement, uh, we just please and ask uh, our audience. Uh, to put a chat questions and so which always uh, uh, there are a lot of queries which we always want to answer them so good evening sir dr yes. deepak here beautiful yes yes deepak uh, sir with a, with a seven french guide catheter what would be the maximum burst size that you that you would go with uh, would, would you go with yeah. 1.75 plus 2 would you up to two. go up to yeah, two, two or off. more than 2, two yeah, two o. So uh, seven, your six will take one point seven five, and seven will take two o. So now I know many of the cases you can combine with IVL, but uh, here I think I'll have a major issue in terms of IVL tracking. I think you need a L point seven five guide. Mm. Uh, so IVL may not go with other tortuosity. So in here we see one point seven five, and that's the one which will show uh, that what we train everybody that uh, you do. Um, basically, a bar, even if you decided 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, then put a side-by-side -side wire and use a balloon. If your lesion opens up, you don't need to upgrade. So this is the goal here, that we go with a 1.75 first. I think AL.75. You got anterior open, open. takeoff. Huh? Yeah, see, see, the engaging the guide yeah. is a little different, uh, difficult because of the anterior takeoff. But yes, we can go up to the 2 of bar uh, with, and I know that uh, many of the guides, 6 French, have a tough time with the 1.75. Metronic. Yeah. Metronic. Metronic acidos. Okay. Okay. So we, uh, yeah. So this is since anterior takeoff. This is the Lima guide or JR guide. I know there are many of other support guides are available in India. So we are taking this out and we are going with the AL, uh, a little more supportive catheter uh, in this particular case. Sir, since yeah. it's a downgoing RCA, at yeah. some point of time, would you think in terms of a multi-purpose catheter? Yeah, actually, you know what? It looks very good that multi-purpose may fit in, but I can tell you my personal experience in this kind because yes, it's the anterior takeoff. That the is support really, will yeah. be very difficult with multi-purpose, but yeah. we'll see. How but, uh, see but this AL.75 will fit nicely. The I know AL.75 is not sure. available many times in India or AL.1. Okay. Uh, but this is the AL.75, yeah. No, 7 French. Uh, or you can go to AL.3 uh, uh, DRC. <laughs> yeah, AL or AL1. Yeah, AL1 or AL.75 will fit nicely in the down uh, pointing this uh, right coronary artery. Good. Sir, AL.75 is presently available in India. We call it as the SAL catheter, the short and flat yeah. left catheter. Yeah, good. Okay, yeah. So that's good. So I know a few of the live cases we did, uh, it was difficulty, but yes, 0 0.75 is the ideal for the uh, tortuous complex right coronary, in my opinion. I know there is another, uh, the right guide, which is available for, to me, found a very aggressive. Uh, all the right support which you have. It's too big, yes, too big, too big. Okay, let's see the first second. Let's bring the picture up uh, where it is exactly. So this is the way. Ah, uh, good, good. Now let's try. So this is the AL 0.75 seven French. Uh, question is, do you need this or you need a AL one? Well, it looks like 0.75 is not reaching. Or other way could be that no torque. No torque. Probably no torque guides. To go. Open. Would you so consider, please. sir, uh, this for this uh, down sloping many times? AR one is useful. Yeah, no, but I think the the AR or AL in the same family, but AR may not reach because I think it's a not only down, so it's a little entry takeoff too. So I, if AL 0.75 didn't reach, it's unlikely that your AR2 will go. So I think it will be that you need a bigger catheter. Uh, yeah, but multi-purpose is a good choice. I mean, I think uh, if uh, the next catheter we can try will be the multi-purpose. If we have seven French multi-purpose, right? Yes, I completely agree with you. If I'm in your uh, position, I would uh, I would use a uh, multiple pros, considering that the takeoff is uh, down sloping. Good. Okay, so we are starting now. Deep seat, deep seat the catheter in case we need yeah. a good support. Yeah. Good. 
So we have uh, looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah, so now we'll try the multipurpose now. Next one we try will be the multipurpose. Take the multipurpose catheter. Hmm. Hmm. Good, one second. Touch. One second. One in, second. Yeah, in. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, good. So let's give. So this is, uh, tell what catheter you have. This is uh, the Underneath. 3DRC catheter, which is very good for anterior takeoff. This is also the guide catheter of choice when we have austral RCA stand and you know, um, you know, the stent, part of the stent is sticking out. This is the best uh, guide. So if you see here, it just uh, sits nicely. We didn't have to manipulate a lot. Good. You want to take a guide picture? Yeah. We give a nitro. You always need to do. So this is the 3D RC or NOTO, right? That's available there also. Good. Good. Okay. So now this is the case. You don't go with the rotawire directly, very tortuous. You want to go with a fielder, fine cross, or whatever your workhorse wire is. Have a seven French and Godzilla over the wire is. system. And you can have seven French uh, Godzilla. Yeah. The initial bar size. I think 1.75 is okay. But it's a large bar. Uh, I mean, large vessel and little angulation. Floral. I think we still should go to the AV continuation. Yeah. Now you have to go. It's at, yeah. No, don't do that. Hmm. Good. So this is the fine cross. Let's see how. Yeah, it's so going okay. We have the one seven five bar ready. Good. 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 Okay. Clean and keep it. Okay, so now we actually, as you know, that there are two advances have been made in rotational atherectomy. One is the wire, the rotor wire will make it a little more flexible. Uh, and uh, though, I mean, again, that uh, has compromised part of the strength of the rotor wire, but it makes mo more torqueable. Uh, the rotor wire drive direct right yeah rotor drive, drive both rotor drive floppy as well as extra support and that will be coming to india very soon uh, actually but they said that it will be there now and then second is the rotor pro the whole assembly uh, which could be in the one cart with your nitrogen tank and so uh, so and all the controls of that on the table so right here the advanced knob, everything is there, uh, so nothing separate. So no taco, no uh, extra pedal, and so that really has helped to set up the device very quickly. And I was told that it will be just coming because the standard rota they will not be manufacturing uh, soon, and uh, I think in India also it's going to come in next uh, few weeks or few months maximum. Okay, so once it is. So this comes with a setup of already 155,000 RPM. So you are there. So you just test it, oh, the usual. Yep, 155, usually 155 outside. And we know in the body will be about 145 to 150. So that is called slow speed. Although the data of the slow speed or fast speed have shown that no difference, but we always love the flow speed. But a lot of people use fast speed. Many of them do on a much lower speed with the multiple uh, ablations, try to get some better uh, lumen, which has been shown in one of the OCT trial. Any other questions so far? On this particular case, I think the guide sit very nicely. Wire has gone to the distal. The question will come. Dark. Yeah. At the bifurcation, huh? No, the camera is very dark top. Yep. Okay. So this is the one point seven five bar. Good one. So I'm inside. trying to advance and. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Good. Leave in the proximal area where uh, you have a normal segment. Do your three things so that you remove all the tension. So you have your knob which you move backward forward, remove all the tension between the uh, Teflon sheath and the bar, 
Next is uh, Y connector. You just release the Y connector, move the bar backward forward. This is any tension between the bar and the wire is gone. And the last one, you already on the dyna. So on the dyna, which is will be a slow RPM, you just do a tap. So Good. the bar did not move. So everything is ready to start our uh, rotor burring. So you're off dyna. And then my left hand is holding the guide. And I'm going to start. For second test. Yeah. Yeah. Can we show the hemodynamics in the side? So blood pressure has gone down systolic to about 100. So our so goal there is that we always fluid. have to have systolic above 100 and by fluid. giving appropriate medications, whether it's a, a, by giving a neosinephrine or extra fluid and so. Once it is more than 100, then only you go further. Yeah. No, okay. All right. So yeah. with 100 now plus. see the light better. Oh. Okay. Good. And the hemod in the side. Okay. Okay. I think we should go to the bifurcation. There is a tight lesion there. Now, and I always say, once you do a chain the wire position, so many times it will help more eccentric cutting or ablation. Yeah. Yeah. So ablation, 20 seconds maximum. Um, and then you do a polishing. And then during uh, ablation time, you can change the wire position. And idea there is that wire will direct uh, bar to more uh, eccentric or elliptical uh, area. So now we have done that. This I is a 1.75. One one yeah. yeah. I think we should do two more. Yeah. Yeah. There are two more bars. Yeah. Only good. the proximal, right? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Come on. Okay. We are ready to come out now. Yeah. Question comes is that do we go with the 2 bar directly or we uh, try to do our regular balloon angioplasty and see whether lesion can open up? I th oh wait, don't open. Yeah. It may open up now. Hmm? Let's take it a picture. Let's yeah. take a picture. Yeah. yeah, let's take a picture. I think this is the case uh, having a, a the you know, yeah, it's a, I think 2 bar will be good. Yeah. Any Anybody uh, will try different and again. If you want to use a IVL, maybe another choice. Only problem will be the delivery of the IVL, uh, which is a good device. Straightforward, large vessels, but definitely is a little more difficult in this kind of angulated, tortuous vessel. Any comments from our faculty? Intravascular ultrasound now or later? Yeah. So question is... Yeah, good. Yeah. So I was, I think uh, we do a little later uh, because we know that uh, we have, yeah, you're right. It means if you want to make a decision now that whether you use a additional bar or so uh, or just do a high pressure balloon dilatation based on the concentricity uh, of the calcium. But I think this is okay to show the step bar approach. So here we do about 70 rotas per month of the 350 cases, about 24%. And uh, we use a double, uh, you know, I would say that in since the use of IVL, uh, let's say before the IVL era, the step bar approach uh, was about uh, 8%, 8 to 10%. Now after the IVL introduction, that has gone down to about 5%. So a small number, very, very rare cases, maybe in one in three months. So after like one in 200 cases, 250 cases, we use a, a three bar it was such a complex long lesion, uh, multiple lesion in a vessel. So three bar is almost unheard. I don't think we have used three bar in long time. Uh, and uh, we did one, uh, we know in the June, our symposium, because uh, same, you do use a bar, leave the rotor wire, put a second wire side by side, go to balloon dilatation, and does not crack, then you go to the bigger bar. So in this particular case, we decided with a step bar approach because of a large vessel, even it looks good. Because we know that it will be tough to crack uh, the circular calcium uh, and so. so. That's where it is in the it's like 5 millimeter vessel, 4.55. This is the case could be for the Synergy Megatron. Uh, 
Uh, for the sake of discussion, may I ask yeah. you, uh, why do you choose rota instead of orbital attractomy? Yeah, so because, very good uh, point. Yeah. Special diameter is, this is a large mm -hmm. vessel. Uh, with orbital attractomy, we can have a, 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 the, the device, the diamond can orbit, uh, can have a bigger orbit, so we can debug uh, uh, the vessel uh, better. Yeah, and so secondly, very good. Uh, yeah. With uh, orbital atherectomy for long lesion like this, uh, because of the constant flushing, we may have less uh, slow or no flow phenomenon would probably theoretically be less of a problem. Yep. No, absolutely. Very good points, uh, uh, Dr. Tego. The key is the orbital. Remember orbital at a, a 1.25 and at a, your a regular 80,000 RPM will give you lumen about 1.7. 1.657. Now, at we go to 120,000 RPM, this gives you lumen about 1.9. So, it's still limited. And then with the tortuosity. So, one issue which we have seen that with the orbital, although now we have the different uh, wiper flex, that orbital will create a gutter because it's the point 0, 1, 2 wire. And we actually, in our algorithm, we always have shown that avoid in a tortuous vessel. So, we do... Yeah. Same, yeah. We do about, uh, you know, of uh, about 15% uh, our atherectomy is orbital. Uh, and uh, I do every other month uh, our orbital, uh, you know, workshop here. But key is in the tortuous vessel uh, and osteal lesion. Those are the two uh, the, where aorta osteal I'm talking about. Those are the two <coughs> lesions where I would not uh, recommend orbital. And so, compared to rotational. So, that's where the region would be. So, in this particular case, the reason for orbital is not using orbital is very simple. Uh, important being that it's a very tortuous vessel and we have seen it. It creates the gutter. Although rota will create some gutter also, but, uh, but definitely orbital will create a big, uh, the, you know, in a tortuous segment. Uh, no, connect. Okay, just one second. Let's see. Uh, we have, no, one second here. That's good. So, they were making some funny noise. Uh, we always have to see at that time that make sure the connections are good. It's all good. Uh, many times, the, when can, you know, when upgrade the bar. Huh? No, gas. Stalling. Stalling is gas. No. Okay, you want to come back into the guide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. Yeah, some ST have started going up. No. Direct. Take a new one. But you want to just uh, do the balloon now. Good. Yes, let's sir. see, let's see. Yeah, now that there is some ST elevation, let's take a picture and see how it looks. Yeah. Leave it here. Out. No, leave the wire and let's go no, to no, other wire. No, the clip. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. That's okay. Looks okay. We'll slow flow in the PDA. We have to give some more beta blockers and so. Yeah, okay. Let's get to run through wire uh, or fielder. You want to go back to the same fielder? No, run through is good. Night pride is there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's give. You know, it's a large vessel. ACT. Over the ectatic vessels. It's on bio uh, angiomax. Heparin. Good. Yeah, heparin ACT is three o eight. We We're can give one. We're going to give some uh, night pride also. I give some. Uh, so essentially, you're going to give some. Nitro, Varapamil, Nipride. Yep. And patient has been on Plavix uh, because anytime when we work on the CTO vessels, we tr don't try to use P2Y12, uh, stronger ones. Uh, but after it is done, then yes. But in this particular case, we tested patient for PRU. On Clopidogrel, his uh, PRU is what? You don't want to do? Hmm? No, don't but want? let's take a picture. There's a PDA. There's slow no, no. flow in the PDA right now. Let's take a picture now. What was the PRU number? 120. So anything less than 230 is the means the responder. And now we are trying to see here. No, it's okay. Yeah. 
I think let's try to see the balloon wise because patient has some EK changes, which is okay. I mean, this is we have done our work. Okay, give me the balloon. Hmm. So now pressure is slightly down, which is expected in this such a complex case. Can we turn off the pacer? Yeah, give atropine. Yeah, a lot of yeah. No that. need, no need no. for atropine. Yeah. No, no, no atropine. Do you have vasodilators in your rotor flash? Yeah. So ba basically, we combine 5,000 heparin, 5,000, uh, 5 milligram of nitroglycerin and uh, 5 milligram of rapamil in one liter bag. So that's our uh, standard rotor flush. So now we... Yeah, good. Tell Dr. Robbins. Tell them to tell Robbins. Yeah. Okay. So now we have wired... Uh, so things are stable hemodynamically. They should continue to show hemodynamics. Don't go to the PD. Yeah. Don't go to the distillation. Yeah. The hemodynamics should be shown on one side. And uh, now my more concerning in this case is because all this plaque. Now uh, this is a 3.5, 20 balloon. Good. Ready? I'm going to put a Megatron 4-5. Your Megatron 4-5? Or 5-4. It's a 5-4. Okay. I know the... Okay, down. The Synergy Megatron is not available there, but this is a large vessel where you can use a large Synergy. Uh, 4.5 or 5-4. Uh, or you can go with the Megatron with the large cells. Give you more radial strength. Okay, good. Nice. Yeah. But you have to take care of the distal also. Hmm? We leave that distal. That's okay. Yeah. Hmm. Good. Take a. No, so the see vestes because of this. Yeah. So nicely expanded. Our very good. Leave the distal. Yeah. We are just discussing. I think the distal lesion we should leave alone. I know we did rotational atherectomy as long as we don't have to balloon that. Yeah. Right? You want to yeah, go five, with a bigger balloon? 5428. No, we can put a 5428. Yeah. Megatron. 28 or 32? 32. 32. 32. Do yeah. you have 32? Yeah. So this one we are going to use uh, Megatron and the proximal tortuosity. So everything settled down now. Uh, and uh, But that was our rotor flush, uh, which is. Okay, routinely used uh, and I know that a uh, lot of people don't use verapamil there but uh, diltiazam is another option which is completely fine yeah 28 yeah can we have the IVAS? 32 or, yeah. or you want yeah. IVAS? you want IVAS now or later yeah you want to do IVAS now yeah okay. patient we is can do stable, so yeah look that, look we the can IVAS. do the IVAS now sure good take the rotor wire out or leave it leave it leave it okay Okay, so so let's show the IVAS, yeah. So there are situations wherein with the nitro inside the rotor flush, we yeah. tend to see high, hypotension during burring. So yeah. do you have any solution for that? or? Yeah, that's a very good point. Mind? So a so lot of people actually the same issue uh, comes uh, that uh, do you really need this uh, vasodilators? Uh, we know that in the past, uh, we did the trial called BARD. Uh, you know, that time we were using the vasodilator back in 96, 98. But that time by the more aggressive burring, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 word to artery ratio and so, uh, and used to have that by using vasodilator, you have a slow flow, less slow flow. Now, the coming back to the point, since the orbital started, uh, we said that we stopped using the flush in the rota also. But, you know, we paid the price. This we start seeing more slow okay? flow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a big lumen. Yeah, big lumen. But it's circular sure. calcium. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, circular calcium. Yeah. Coming back. Where's the yeah, side branch? Uh, still not yet. But here's the tight. Floro. Can I see the floro? Yeah, past yeah, still it. Still 360 calcium. Yeah. Uh, here's the tight. Right part. Maybe There's the, a side uh, branch. The, this is the side branch. Yeah, here's also. Once the lumen is bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is the first lesion and this is the bigger big again. lesion now. But see the cut in the circular calcium by that our bar. But, but look, yeah, it's still very tight, tight lesion. Flux not tight lesion. 
Yeah, it looks like casa nodule for protruding inside. It looks like ablated. Yeah, cuts. The multiple you cuts in the circular yeah. calcium has been done yeah. by 1.75 bar. Yeah. Then we are dilated with a 3.5 yeah. balloon. A big and that's where we are. It's a big vessel. What size is the vessel? Okay, I'll show you that right. the proximal part is... Uh, oh, so confirmed, basically okay. what we knew angiographically. Yeah, proximal is 5.6. In this particular case. Wow, well, 5.6. Yeah. So we have the 5.4 yeah. megatron. You also see the like cause a nodule. Yeah. It looks like ablated the surface. Yeah. Now, there's a distal lesion. Can you go back and uh -huh. give us there's so much STs? I don't want to do distal. Hmm. And then yeah, this is just the after the lunch. Yeah, yeah it looks later. still tight. Yeah. So, distal lesion is after the PDA. Is it significant or not? That's one of the uh, reasons we need to find. But anyway, I think we need to stabilize the proximal mid lesion. We have a 5428 megatron. And I know uh, my friend's a little. Uh, so, you know, things come in India slightly slower, but they come. So they'll have a Megatron also. They said maybe by uh, end of the year or next year. But this is great stent in the large vessel, particularly osteal lesion, proximal segment. I may need a not deliverable. Yeah, so clearly it comes yeah. with that. It may not be that deliverable, but it's went in. That's fine. No, no. We yeah. have to go more. Take the rotavir. No. Okay. No. Take the rotavir out and see. To get it. A uh, few more millimeters in. Get me the Godzilla. No, but let's see the little die. Not there, SS. Where? Okay, you went a little Half further. No. You still need. It's not okay. around the bend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to go to the bend. So, okay. Let's take the rotor this far out. We have the. Get the Godzilla. One thing is, will it go five French through this Godzilla? Yeah, it will go. May not. And get a 4.5 balloon in case we need to. Put dilate. this further, yeah, dilate. Okay, let's take the rotor wire out and then we go with this. Um, is there any role of IVL now? Yeah, so no, IVL, I think the it has nicely expanded. Uh, the lumen-wise balloon has expanded. So I would say that as such, since the balloon has expanded, if you want, we can see a little bigger balloon uh, that uh, that IVL may not be needed. 4.5 what length? 4. 12. 4. 12. Yeah. No, 15 is okay, yeah. Okay. So, because I don't think it's the issue now of the dilatation, right? What is the minimum lumen, uh, Kiski? Uh, in the mid part. So. And you see, uh, even the nodule has been ablated, right? Yeah, yeah, looks yeah. ablated here, here. Yeah. I think enough lumen. Okay. But it's the toe just and the protruding inside, so. Okay, so we are going to see if you can advance by itself. No. Yeah, okay, so you, we go with a bigger balloon now and uh, put our Godzilla, seven French. Good. So that, uh, of course, uh, such a bulky, uh, the stent, which is, uh, you know, expected with this tortuosity. I mean, I never expected that any stent will go without the, the Godzilla or so. Yeah, yeah too far. No, okay, yes, good. Okay. We are going up now. Go. Now I know we are in the normal segment. I want how to get the. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. I'm coming, and then you deflate. And many times you advance your guide extender when you deflate the balloon. That's good. You don't need more than that. Get me the stent. Yeah. Pump. Yeah. Okay. We are headed now. We still have not decided about the distal RCA that early bifurcation. We thinking taken all these things together that we leave it uh, unless we'll see after this stabilization of the proximal to mid RCA how things are. We may take a call and of course the input and opinion at that time. So right now it's the same 5428 megatron is going in. Good. Okay. How much sir this megatron can expand beyond if you have five? Yeah, I think again we have coronary, we don't have five point more than five for balloon coronary. We got it now? Yes. More than five for balloons. No. Yeah, we don't no, carry five point five, no. but I think anytime you got a five for lumen. 
it is the same thing that little picture yeah good yeah okay we are going up good go up yeah yeah but i Can mean we have the hemos by the side continuously okay you same go to 16 atmosphere and keep it people always ask how long you want to keep it when it stops going down so it's stable at 16 then you go down yeah now clearly during this time make sure your guide is out uh, and uh, your flow is maintained in large vessels you really go multiple negatives even diluted dye Wait, 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 yeah, one wait, second. Wait, no, no. Good, good. Now we'll be okay. Yep. More negative. No. Good. Okay. You can take a picture now or later. Okay. We may not see anything with the bulky balloon. Yeah. With the bulky balloon mm -hmm. and the guide liner, we may not see things. But here is the major decision. Things look okay. Let's give major dilators. So we are giving verapamil, as I know, uh, they do quite a bit of cardine and uh, other agents. Uh, Nicorindal is given uh, in India, so we are okay now. Oh, shit. Yeah, good. Can you take the pressure the, display off? We want to look at the distal vessel as well. Yeah, exactly. So we'll do less mag, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Beautiful. So far, things settling down. EKG still has some upward ST elevation, but we have to post dilate that mid segment, right? Yeah. Yes. Get the balloon. Four point five or five. What do we have? I have a five or fifteen. Yeah. So because mid, it's a five plus vessel, very ecstatic vessel, large vessel. Take the four point five. I think yeah. the five maybe stretching it because that calcium is not totally cracked. The mid. So let's see the yes. mid. We would not go very high pressure. Yeah, we have both of them, and the question will come for the distal vessel. What do we decide by N by IVS or by FFR? I think this issue of the distal vessel still will remain. That do we do nine something or not? Because that see the PDA. One second. Yeah, see the PDA is mild disease. Anytime you work on that. It will affect. Yeah. So let's. We'll have a maybe better assessment. Good. That's fine. This is the where you wanted. This is a five o. Yeah. It's a five o fifteen. Yeah. Okay. You're going up. I wanted to make a turn here. Okay. You can bring the guideline if you want to advance further. Can you go higher, Mag? Okay. Okay. Good. So this is again five for fifteen. Yeah. Good. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So again, we'll not go crazy pressure, which I call them twenty plus. Is a crazy, but we go about twelve, fourteen. Yeah. Not not more than that. Sixteen. Yeah. We can bring the guideline up back. Yeah. Godzilla back. Down. Go down. Hmm. And we do the proximal mid segment is the one. Proximal and mid, you know that the tightest lesion was there, which we are not opened yet. But the stent has very nicely expanded, great uh, with the synergy, very good expansion with the rota and uh, our balloon. Yeah, eighteen here. Okay, done. We need the, just the proximal edge a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, and then we just going to do a proximal edge. But hemodynamics good. Patient is not on any wage of pressures or so. Okay. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Now the eye is ready. Pull back the wire a little bit. Mm -hmm. Wire curling up. Good. Okay. <clears throat> I know we have a lot of good talks. Uh, sorry, uh, she's saying something. 
Yeah, it's done. I think if you just show us the IVAS and forget about the distal RCI. Would be difficult to get stents from that. No, no, stand the stent will go because we have done the rota there. So I'm, believe me, now I'm yeah. definitely not concerned now, but we won't use the Megatron. There will use a 4020 uh, uh, synergy. Uh, we have the, you know, but if necessary, if we decide. Okay, let's take a picture first. Okay, that, I think the IVAS will be a good one. The get a lumen of more than four millimeter or four minus or four plus. So that will be, okay. yeah, okay, here. So we are going. What is the prediction? Let's, you know, we always say, let's uh, declare ourselves what we'll see. In my opinion, the lumen will be less than four. What about my other faculty? No, we are not. Where are you going? For the distal. We have. No, now, let's see. Yeah, what was the lumen at that time? No, it still was 3O. Okay, let's see now with the vasodilators and so. Proximal opening, how we are done. Good. If you were to stand the PGA, yeah. do you stand the whole of the RCA no I, would, PDA no, I would no I would no I would do it just distal to the PDA because I think once we start doing the PDA will get a little more complicated we'll put a wire in the PDA and just put a distal to it okay all right let's bring that on the screen okay start to work again yeah yeah this is the uh, this all of the AV Sine, where you are yeah still mm -hmm. 360 castle but here the lumen is okay I'm going to plug small no, right there right there bookmark smaller. Oh. yeah bookmark but this is, we cut with the 1.75 bar there. Yeah. But there's still. Yeah, here's tight. Yeah, yeah now come no, to I the advance. I think this is uh, yeah. And Foxman is bigger. Okay, let's see the stent. Yeah, I think lumen everywhere there will be uh, low, a 4 -oh. Doesn't look uh, too bad. It's still yeah. outside a stent. Yeah, lumen is bigger. Yeah, <laughs> this is a, looks like uh, this is the edge of the stent. Yeah, it looks expanded and no edge dissection, no malaposition. Yeah, looks expanded, a little bit elliptical shape, but the lumen is good. Expanded. Well opposed. Yeah, well opposed. Well, well opposed expanded. and well expanded. Yeah. yeah. Steering just Both. bent. Yeah, looks good. Wow. Good. Yeah, well yeah, expanded. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Okay. And you see the hemodynamics. Go back to the hemodynamics. Looks very good at present. And patient has no chest pain. Uh, and uh, uh, the question is that uh, knowing the lumen is okay in that area. Uh, Go back to the distal. Uh, sure. right, Go back right, to the right, distal. Right. Yeah, right so there, this right is there, a right bl branch from yeah, the right two o'clock. After, after the branch. Yeah, this yeah, is right the, that. Yeah. yeah, give us a. Yeah, see? Yes, just one breeze. Yeah. So. No, 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 no. You're wrong. Back, out, out, outside. Come yeah. outside, yeah. 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 It's okay. All right. You want to see the final picture? Uh, we can remove the pacemaker. Yeah, it looks but like around yeah. four. See the, see the hemodynamics are quite good. No, no. It's bigger than 4.0. Okay. About 4. Let's say 3.95 or 4. Yeah, yeah, a take a good picture. Yeah, yeah. Like, like this. Okay, good. Ready? Yep. Yeah. What is this? Mega. Yeah, there is a lot of disease further down also, downstream in this particular case. As you can see, but mega vessel proximally, look at the proximal segment, how nicely it has expanded and so came EKG out. EKG yeah. back to baseline, right, Will? Okay. EKG back to baseline. The question always remains that do you go after, but remember in this case, during the process, when if I go back, take it out, yeah. So if I go back, remember he patient start having some chest pain and EKG changes uh, after we did a balloon. See, here we done the rota. Now we go back to this case after we had done the balloon. Now look at the slightly Timmy 3 minus flow in the PDA. That time patient did have some chest pain and so. So all this key is that anytime we try to work in that AV continuation, early bifurcation is going to give us, uh, this is the time we did the IVAS, uh, put a stent, post dilated now with a 5 
and this is where we are now uh, okay so always we say low mac last picture Out. without moving catheter you did uh, in this particular case we have seen all uh, we have done the iwas confirm iwas here uh, some people may decide uh, based on the significance of the lesion on by ffr and ifr any one of them uh, and uh, those you know some of the trials are ongoing to answer that question that do you normalize your ffr and ifr uh, post uh, post intervention because abnormality occurs in almost 24 28% of cases uh, of that 70% because of the focal lesion and others are more diffuse and in those focal lesion by giving optimization stent uh, stenting dilatation or putting additional stent may normalize your ffr and ifr so that's where we are so this is where uh, if uh, everybody is all right and okay uh, we stop here we are done this uh, a complex case went through various steps and the same that we would have gone with a 2o bar we were 1.75 but 2o bar has some uh, technical issues and we still don't know exactly what it was a uh, bar stalled uh, there was a nice connection but it's add on a clip uh, you know added on bar still despite the nice uh, issues there are some so that always happens when you upgrade the bar but uh, that's okay no harm done because i was confirmed that we have cut the interlastic lamina of that circular calcium and which led to this excellent uh, expansion and opposition of a stent in this 5 mm plus vessel uh, so we take some uh, comments from the faculty or any other question from our uh, uh, chat um, uh, audience uh, if not then uh, we'll go back and uh, continue our discussion uh, further on yes any questions now of course uh, the, uh, uh, the result is uh, excellent uh, this is anto sir from jakarta in indonesia so uh, I, i would like to congratulate you for the uh, excellent uh, live uh, demonstration but uh, i just want to have a uh, uh, your opinion regarding uh, lesion preparation we all know that uh, in heavily calcified very long uh, lesion like this uh, lesion preparation of, is of utmost importance so what is your ifos criteria to tell us that uh, that uh, we have done enough uh, lesion preparation of course uh, usually after uh, rota we see concave uh, smooth and surface hmm. calcified lesions the what is the ifos criteria that you have done the lesion crack. modification yeah But in this uh, in this particular case i don't see a lot of cracks uh, after uh, balloon dilatation even though uh, we Can you go back yeah. to the IVAS? Yeah. Sure. You don't see waste and, during uh, the patient. Yeah, so Before you can see that. Your IVAS criteria. To the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are there are cuts there in the IVAS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, one is uh, you have a heavy calcium which is tram track circular. Go back to that sort of where you have circular calcium. And other thing that we also saw here is a calcific uh, nodule. So here, please please show them where we. This is a calcific nodule. and always the treatment is same when there is a calcific nodule treatment is rotational atherectomy because you are able to you know uh, cut the shelf of that uh, calcium can you show where where exactly yeah, put the arrow there yeah i think the surface is, is ablated so and the still diameter is so uh, like it's big here yeah so how okay. to yeah like then go back to the 360 degree arc of calcium where we can show them the rotor cut yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah yeah no, come yeah. back yeah, right there So if you see this 360 degree arc calcium yeah, at about 11 o'clock and then even at 2 uh, 3 o'clock you start see the rotation of the arterectomy which has actually uh, caused some uh, um, you know calcific uh, cut there, or cut in the calcium arc there so if you see here this is a nice one to show that so if you are doing ivas i think uh, like we mentioned how you make a decision uh, in this case tram track angiographically it was tram track calcium i think you didn't we didn't need to do ivas beforehand or uh, what a uh, kind of imaging to understand definitely you need a atherectomy and we already made a point why we are going to use here rotational atherectomy and not orbital atherectomy once we made the uh, once we have done the atherectomy we already have done imaging uh, i mean who wants to use imaging but i think the way we normally do is that we will wire side by side and then use a high pressure balloon the teaching is one to one 
high pressure balloon and high pressure we are talking about at least 2022 20, atmosphere if that time we see that is no cracking of the vessel we can make a decision you want to go i mean used to go higher uh, rotational atherectomy bar or now we can consider if you want to go with the ivl um, there yeah so i think the question comes is that the based on the ivs or let's say even for that matter, OCT. OCT. There is no clear criteria that you have to do this much plaque modification or cut of the calcium for you to expand uh, that you are you are done your job. To me, the good telltale sign is in the circular calcium that you have made a cut. Once you have made a cut, you know that vessel going to expand. Yeah, Ajit, you have a question? So, uh, I just want to know how many times you do cutting balloon dilatation post uh, rotational atherectomy. So, in this case, probably 3.5, uh, 15 uh, balloon you use after rotational atherectomy. Um, would uh, cutting balloon, you know, the particularly Wolverine, which has come in the market with yeah. a good trackability, would I help us uh, probably to crack the calcium further? Yeah. So, I would say that this, uh, the concept of the rota cut is a very valid one. And uh, if we have a good size. I can tell you in the, if we had a 4.0 cutting balloon, we would not have used 3.5 high pressure. We would have gone with a 4.0 cutting balloon, uh, which is not available now. We only have 3.25 uh, uh, at present because, you know, the availability of uh, our uh, with a 4.0, because this is a very calcific vessel. Even if you had done the rota of 1.75 or 2.0, combining with the cutting balloon is absolutely appropriate. There are some data that rota cut versus PTCA rota, that rota cut may have a little lower restenosis, but we are doing a trial, imaging trial of 60 patients, half randomized to a small bar, followed by uh, cutting balloon, or your regular balloon, regular bar means it's still bar to art ratio only 0.5, and followed by high pressure dilatation, and which technique gets a better lumen so we have this is the ivas guided trial of the rota cut uh, we got fda uh, just approval 60 patients uh, two centers trial will be starting and will really give us insight that do you really need to use a cutting balloon routinely after your moderate debulking because we know that we don't do uh, the plaque modification using a bigger bar we just use a 0.4.5 bar to artery ratio so additional whether high pressure balloon will do good or you need to use a cutting balloon some data showed that using cutting balloon is better than using a high pressure balloon only i think going back to your point um, so there's no clear cut data either on imaging to say uh, should we go every time with a cutting balloon cost also matters you already done atherectomy and a cutting balloon uh, still is about $900 compared to regular balloon is about $200 so cost does matter so nothing wrong in going high pressure one to one vessel size if you see any kind of dog boning and you know certain part of the vessel is not fully um, expanded that's the time you make a decision do you want to go IVL or do cutting balloon um, of course, more and more uh, experience with imaging will tell us probably we can have an uh, algorithm to say, you know, when this kind of imaging uh, um, criteria you see what you need to do. But, uh, but this is all work in progress. We have been doing a lot of, uh, you know, imaging, especially for the live cases. Um, and we probably will have some kind of an algorithm uh, in these cases. All right. One so, question. Yeah, sure. One yes. question in the chat box for you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, I think uh, the questioner wants to ask why the distal lesion was not covered. Yeah. So I think you, sh you showed us the IVAS data if you'd like to answer him. All right. So I think uh, the question is that whether, I, I'm not saying that we had done the right thing or wrong thing by not doing the distal lesion at this complex case. That's okay because this patient may still come back uh, with we have a, a very extensive disease on the left side got three, four stents, now got a one long stent only, but uh, there is a lot of disease. In the, you know, so the, there is a disease in the RPL, very further down, 80 per 70 per plus percent. And then at the early bifurcation, at the AV continuation, another 60, 70, then before the further down there, another multiple lesions are there. So question comes that, did we do the right thing, not going after the distal lesion in this particular case? I think you take the case together, very complex, did have a part, a uh, little slow flow because of the, uh, so much, uh, the plaque, uh, you know, embolization, but still within the limit and we came uh, ahead. So in this case, I'm not saying that this patient will not require some intervention six or nine months later. So that's okay. We yes. follow the patient 
and then that time will take a call and that time will be much easier and lower complication come back and then take care of the few lesions of the distal rca or av continuation and postolateral because there is a lesion in the postolateral also so there are yes. if we require we have to do a just after the bifurcation then before that big postolateral branches and then one in the postolateral so the answer to that is that some people will like to just go all the way but that will add additional morbidity of this patient may, may have some more chest pain may have side branch occlusion of the pda little more st elevations more slow flow so i think taken things together uh, we decided at this time and the i was actually favored us the lumen was just about 4 40 so that okay 4.06 so we if we can yes. show that uh, that it's a, it is okay to not to do it so just to say this is kind of a discussion type that you take a call while you are working through it and uh, that's why we decided not to take care yeah it is not a easy lesion yeah. bifurcation yeah. and this uh, vessel you see that it's moderate 30 50 disease in the pda and when we are working with the even we think we can uh, you know place the stent just after uh, the origin of pda we could still compromise uh, the pda i think the important decision here is that when you are working on a one particular segment of the rca and like we saw the patient started having chest pain ekg changes some slow flow for whatever reason after we did a threctomy and we then able to get him back then i think it's telling us it's time to take care of that particular area as long as the distal vessel and the lesion was not angiographically i mean we did i was angiographically was not looking bad uh, it's time to stop as interventionists we also should learn to know when to stop and not keep going behind every single lesion you will only he already started telling us that this vessel is giving us whatever expected rotational threctomy complication if we keep going behind and beating that vessel we definitely will have more complication right now he may have some uh, peri procedural uh, ckmb elevation but uh, sts are down um, because if there was persistent st in this patient we would probably leave him with a balloon pump so we don't have to do all that and uh, likely he will have some peri procedural mi and uh, will uh, hopefully go home tomorrow itself um rather than us going behind every particular lesion and like dr sharma mentioned nothing wrong if he has symptoms you know bring back and take care of this uh, uh, you know the lesions down which are further down at a later stage okay dab you have a question yeah. uh, thank you that is that is a very comprehensive answer uh, to the query I, i think there should not be any doubt uh, that in this case this was the right thing to do beautiful okay now ajit now you can uh, continue our uh, discussion you are inviting for lecture by dab and so and i'll join you in about 5 minutes with that note we stop our live relay from here and thanks to everyone